Hello everyone and welcome back to this FM17 experiment where we take a look at what would happen if we gave a non-league club perfect facilities. Now we have done two parts to this episode. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a third part but a lot of you guys were very interested in a third part to this series. Uh, you may remember last time that Salford's facilities, uh, Salford being the team we used for this experiment, their facilities had dropped down from about from 20 as a rating to about 12, 13. They'd really depreciated and it. it's in the club really struggle in its situation. So what we've done for this to make it a little bit more interesting is we've put those facilities back up to 20. We've gone about 15 years in the future. We're now basically 50 years into this experiment and we're just going to see how they've managed to get on with these brand new facilities, youth recruitment, uh, training in youth facilities and the youth coaching as well. They've all been bumped back up to 20 and we'll take a look at where the club is. Well, here is the overview page, and it's clear to see that they are back in Skybet League One, but they've really not progressed at all. In fact, they actually they did make the championship again in 57-58. They also made it in 52-53, um, and they managed to get in there. You may remember, last, remember that last episode, they just made it in the championship again before dropping into League One, which seems to be their comfort zone. They stayed in there for a very long time, sometimes getting close to the playoffs and the promotion spots but not quite doing it. And then they finally managed to do it through the playoffs, finishing third before getting relegated bottom of the league first time around. Then back up by the playoffs, clearly a good League One team, winning in the playoffs yet again and then getting relegated 22nd this time. But then they fell very hard, finishing 20th, then 24th in League One and then only 6th in League Two the year after that uh, before finally getting promoted in fourth place through the playoffs again uh, they seem to be playoff fans from the looks of it um, and then they finished 18th in league one this season so putting those youth facilities back up doesn't seem to have helped whatsoever the club is really just very much a league one team and it looks like if all you do is bump up the facilities that is all that happens in this game you can get as high as league one but the standard for perfect facilities alone is league one um, but I am surprised that given how long they've spent in League One and the fact that they do have better facilities and youth recruitment than everybody else, that they haven't been able to take that next step. Because you'd imagine that a good manager would come in. We'll take a, a look later at some other teams that have had success without the youth facilities. And I don't really understand what the game's criteria is for computer-controlled clubs to actually go up the leagues because sometimes there's some absolutely crazy things happening, which we will take a look at, given we're 50 years into this series. Um... But first off, I'm just going to take a look at their transfer history um, because we just want to see if they're still just flogging off all of their best players. You can see that they made 200 grand profit this season and then sold 1.5 million pounds. Rob Tung went to Barnet for a million pounds. Um, he is a Salford graduate. He was with the club in the championship, uh, went out on loan and then made a name for himself in League 1 and League 2, but he was sold to Barnet for a million pounds. So they sold one of their better youth prospects there. Um, again, they sold Kevin James to Brentford for £1.1 million, another Salford graduate going for nearly a million pounds. Um, a few players went this season. You can see they're clearing out about one and a half, £1.5 £1 million every season without actually bringing any money back in. You've got Terry O'Brien, went to Aston Villa, another Salford graduate at a very young age leaving the club. Um, even more signings here. You've got £3.4 million for Greg Evans. He was not a Salford graduate, brought in from Everton, but still they had to, they sold £7.75 million of players um, and only made one hundred and seventy five grand. And I think the theme here, um, with Chris Durango in as well for £1.8 million, he was another player brought in from a different uh, club. But you can see the theme here is that these high facilities are maybe hindering the club more than they're helping them because they aren't able to retain these great players. Maybe because of their financial situation, they're having to sell them off straight away in order to keep up with the costs of the facilities. Um, that would be my only theory for why this club is not progressing. Because otherwise they would have everything they need to move up the leagues. But instead they're selling players like Sean Beastle, um, who was another Salford graduate who went for nearly a million pounds. And there's just so many of them out there. Um, that have been sold for this money every year trying to rake in as much cash as they can. Stephen Alcock, I think, was one of the last players we looked at before going ahead in time. Um, but overall, they've just not done the job whatsoever. And if we take a look at their senior squad and maybe have a look at the value of the players in there, 
Um, there's just nobody of any value there whatsoever. They've sold them all off. Grant Foster, 22 years old, is probably another graduate. Now, he's come through from Tottenham. They signed him on a free, so even he isn't a youth prospect. Steve Langley from Ebb's Fleet um, and Keith Bell, he came through um, from West Brom. So they're just not able to hang on to any of their best players which is just really unfortunate, to be honest, because it's the only thing stopping them developing. And I imagine it's because of their finances. These facilities are still very, very good. They've still got superb youth and training facilities, but everything else is just eating up the cost and they're having to sell their players as a result. Now, one of the suggestions in the comments after the last episode was what you can see on the screen, or at least this is as close as I can get it. This is a scout for the last club containing the name Salford. It should show up every player, and you can see there are some good players in here. You've got Alfie Thompson, who's now at West Ham. He is a player who came through the academy, was poached for just 325k, is now worth £7 million. Patrick Kennedy Ingray, he is now worth £4 million. He is actually a player they sold on, didn't bring through the youth team. Greg Evans, 31 years old, I think we've already taken a look at. He was the one that came in from Everton. But you can see a lot of these players are there. I don't think this includes all of them, but you can see the number of players that have come in and out of the club. Quite a few of them still there, some of them no longer with a club. Um, but... I think it's I, that that must be the reason why they're losing players. Examples like this Alfie Thompson one, who went for just 325k and is now worth £7 million. There must be a lot of examples like that over the last 50 years where they've just had to let go of their best players for free, pretty much, um, without bringing any money, being able to invest that money back in the squad because it's going on the expenses for the facilities instead. Now, one of the other things I just want to take a quicker look at is the Premier League because you'll see that Ebb's Fleet United are in there. Um, and I don't understand this at all because they were in League Two just in the 49 season. So that was 12, 13 years ago. They have not had perfect facilities. Um, and I don't really understand. I'm going to have a look at their club details and see if they've got a sugar daddy. They don't have a sugar daddy. They don't even have that much money. But they've risen up from League 2 where they were bouncing up and down out of League 1 like Salford are, but then got a double promotion through the playoffs in League 1 and then went up just one year after that into the Premier League. So in the space of four years... They've gone from League 2 to Premier League, and there is no explanation that I can see for why this has happened. I honestly have no idea. They got relegated, finished 6th, then finished 2nd, and they've been in the Premier League ever since, and they finished 6th in the Premier League last time around. I have no idea how this has happened. Um, they've got a lot of players worth quite a lot of money as well. £25 million for this player. They bought him in for 10 and a half. Um, Eddie Solly. 24 and a half brought in from Fulham for 6.5 it looks like they've just had some exceptional transfer dealings 23 and a half for this one he was actually in Newcastle paid 12 and a bit million for him uh, Glavaki brought in for 9.25 this season it looks like they're just getting some exceptional deals out there because I don't understand how they've managed to get up otherwise maybe they've got a manager or a director of football with excellent transfer stats um, but they've managed to rise up the leagues in a way that Salford haven't. Now, I honestly just do not understand what the game's justification is for this. I mean, maybe some of you guys can let me know why this has happened. But they've got a new stadium. They've got decent facilities, I think, if we take a look at the facilities. Um, superb training facilities, excellent youth facilities. How and why? That is my question. Um, I t really don't understand how this has happened whatsoever. I'm not sure what the landmarks are, if there's anything there. They got a new chairman in 2055. Maybe that's the reason. Um, maybe he invested money in the club's facilities and the stadium and it helped pull them up. But um, yeah, I think this experiment has just left me very, very confused, to be honest. If we take a quick look at the Premier League, um, you can see teams like Ebb City are in there, Brentford are in there. We are 50 years in the future at this point, so the league still looks very, very similar, to be honest. There's only a few things that have changed. Um, if we maybe look at their um, team overview stats, there's nothing there at the moment. Um, Maybe if you take a look at their stadiums, because there's something interesting pointed out to me here. Manchester City named their stadium after Pep Guardiola, which is quite funny that 
he must have had a very, very good time there. They've now got an 81,000-seater stadium. Uh, Junior Park is the name of Chelsea Stadium, just a tiny bit bigger than Manchester City's. Um, and then you've got Herbert Chapman Park at Arsenal, 84,000. And Old Trafford expanded now to 95,000 capacity. Um, no other major changes in stadiums that I can see. I think everybody else is pretty much as they were. Uh, Ebsley have clearly expanded their stadium quite a lot. Um, but otherwise, the Premier League has held together very, very well. Uh, if we have a look maybe at their past winners, you can see Liverpool had a period of dominance um, back to sort of 80s level of dominance. Um, just Arsenal breaking the run two years. Um, otherwise, they've been very much in control, finishing second again this season. Arsenal have definitely had a recovery. They were the main challengers with Liverpool during this period, finishing second five years in a row. Second is the new fourth. Before that, Chelsea had a run. Manchester United had a nice run. City, again, having a good run. I guess that's maybe why uh, it's called Guardiola Stadium. If he stayed with them all this time and won five or six league titles, that might be the reason. But Manchester United did very well as well. The Premier League certainly seems a bit streaky, as far as I can tell. Uh, one club seems to have dominance and then carry on through that. Um, but that is going to be it for this episode, I think. I don't really have any desire to do a f fourth part for this, because I think the games frustrate me a little bit. That Evsfleet managed to get up into the Premier League, whereas 50 years of perfect facilities for Salford only got them as good as the Championship, and even then they got relegated each time. Um, if you guys understand why this is happening, let me know in the comments. I am genuinely interested to find out. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed this experiment and make sure to subscribe. We've got a new experiment coming out in just a couple of days. But until next time, see ya.